Right. Um, we have a lot to cover. Um, big, big cross section of things. What I would love to walk through today is sort of an end to end slice of setting up incident IO one call um, alerts as well and show how that all flows through into the, the mobile app that you can see on the left there and the whole kind of like experience of using incident IO from first alert firing right the way through to you landing in the incident channel and then kicking off your response. Um, obviously, there's a lot in there. Um, so let's let's dig in. Right, I'll move myself out of the way. Now, I guess where to, where we're going to start is with the on-call side. So we're going to set up a, a schedule for a new team. Um, first of all, we'll then create an escalation path, which is sort of the way to sort of make sure that you have the right layers of people uh, got hold of there. Um, and we'll do that all first. So schedules. Um, these will be very familiar if you're used to any other paging provider. Um, we're going to create one called engineering. Uh, it's a small org, let's say. So they just have this engineering organization and I'm going to add myself. I'm going to add a few other people here onto the rotation. Um, and you can see uh, that I have, you know, four people here now. Uh, in fact, let's add a fifth just for, for fun. So scroll down and you'll see, uh, if I move my face out of the way, um, that we have this schedule down here, which is now rotating weekly uh, and sort of looping through all of the people that are here on this schedule. Loads of customization you can do on these schedules. So if you want to have it working daily, you can do that. If you want to have it on some custom uh, thing where you've got intervals or five days on, two days on, whatever it is, um, we're pretty flexible around how that stuff works. I will leave this as weekly for now. Now, one thing that is really cool about Incident IO that I think is markedly different to other providers is that we uh, don't constrain a schedule to be one person on call at a given time. So there are a few ways that you can support multiple people being on call. So first of all is concurrent shifts. So let's say that I want to go, you know, pairwise the top two people, then the next two people, and then the next two people on call at the same time. I can do that literally by changing one one thing there. And you'll see that we now it's right through the list sort of like it's me, then Aaron, then Katie, then Lawrence, then Lucy, then me, then Aaron, then Katie, and so on and so forth. And so you get this nice way that you can immediately set up pair on call here. Um, the other options that we have is adding additional rotors here. So for us, a schedule is decomposed into multiple layers called rotors um, and rotors can you can have many rotors all existing at one time. So let's say, for example, that we want to have a second rotor here that is set up and it is for a shadow person to to pick up. And maybe we don't want anyone to be like default on call there. But what we want is the option for that layer to exist so that someone could go, hey, do you know what? I just want to take a few hours to shadow during working hours today. And they just pop an override on that layer and they will then be there. So two things interesting there. One, two rotors in existence at the same time. Two, you can just have nobody on call, which is something that's been a frustration for me for a great many years using um, other paging tools. So that is basically a quick walkthrough of what schedules look like. Um, a lot of configurability you can do here. So whether it's like shadowing, follow the sun, all of that stuff, all very, very much supported. Nice. Uh, so that is what a schedule now looks like. Um, a few things you can do that's really cool with schedules, connect them to Slack groups. So if you want to have the rest of your organization, or a organization able to interface with this like engineering on call person, but they don't want to go and look things up in the Internet IO dashboard, they just want to like at a Slack group, you can connect a Slack group right here. Um, and we will then manage who who is in that group on an ongoing basis. So as shifts change or people are overriding, we will move them in and out of that group, which is something that I've certainly written many, many times as like a little hacky script on the side. Um, so it's nice that it's kind of supported out of the box here. Nice. Right. That is a, a schedule. The next thing we're going to want to set up this team is an escalation path. So this is, um, if you're familiar with other paging providers, this will be something that you are also familiar with. So essentially, we get to configure multiple layers. So our first layer here will be the engineering schedule. And then after 10 minutes, maybe I want to get hold of, you know, an individual person who maybe is like the manager for this team. And we'll give them 10 minutes to acknowledge and then we'll loop around multiple times. So brings this sort of all together that you can have like very, very high confidence that the right people or at least somebody will be gotten hold of at any any given time when an incident happens. Um, nice. I don't think a ton more to dive into there other than that we can have as many arbitrary layers as we want. We can do combinations of schedules and people, all that kind of fun stuff. Nice. So at this point, we now have a uh, on-call rotation. We now have um, uh, an escalation path. And with a bit of luck, we should now appear in this mobile app that we have uh, another escalation path. So you can see that engineering one that I am currently on call for and it tells me exactly when that has now updated. So these two green cards at the top are basically all of the escalation paths that I'm currently on call for. A uh, really easy way to sort of see that stuff at a glance. So that is broadly on call uh, in a nutshell. Um, tons more we could go into, but I will sort of spare you all of the, the great in-depth uh, stuff there. Nice. 
next place we want to go um so we could at this point just page people right and that would be an on-call rotation where we can do manual escalations most organizations are going to want to connect people who are on call to automated alerts that are happening across the organization and so incident io supports the ingestion of alerts and events from pretty much anywhere so um, if we jump into alert sources which is like your way to configure the things that can send alerts to us um, a bunch of things we can do here. Um, if we go to new alert source, you'll see we support out of the box like a ton of uh, providers already. So the Datadogs and Google Clouds and Grafanas of the world. So if you want to just connect your system in really quickly, we have all the common formats all sort of done for you. We have a few other integrations which are interesting here, like this email one. So click this and you'll get a custom email address that you can send uh, emails to and that will then sort of appear as an alert within the platform. So useful for maybe like support, uh, urgent support things. So if you want to give that out to like enterprise customers or something, uh, you can do that and that will then sort of flow through and trigger trigger on call as well in this case for testing we're going to create an http alert source so this is like the swiss army knife um, alert source that we want to use here uh, and what we get is sort of the you know the configuration here of like setting this thing up now i'm just going to drop this into something over here and i'll nab this bearer token as well um and so i can now if i look at my terminal hopefully fire an alert uh, at this so uh, hopefully we should receive an alert on the on the side here um, if it arrives which it has now um, and so now we sort of sent a test alert so we have confidence this thing is now sort of kind of connected up correctly now let's have a look at this this is now where we get to set up this alert source and you'll see a few things have happened by default so first of all we every alert that comes into the platform uh, has a title and a description um, and maybe taking one step back actually on alerts right now what are we trying to do here so for us the whole point of using alert sources and configuring them in the way that we're about to show you is to take the messy messy world of json and to sort of make the point at which it comes into the internet io platform the last place that you have to interact with that and then within our platform what we want you to be able to do is just look at nicely formatted alerts where we've pulled all the structure out of those alert payloads that you care about and so that is what we're trying to do here with this, this configuration of this alert source you'll see we have like messy json on the right hand side here which is sort of you know the, the raw event that we want to get in and what we've done is we pulled out the nice bits of that so if an alert arrives now you'll see we have a nice title in it we would have the description that comes through which is more details there now, one thing that we let you do with alerts is configure what we call attributes. So this is essentially uh, your way of being able to say, these are the things that I care about on these alerts. And you can sort of structure essentially the bounding box of what an alert is as it's passed around in the Incident IO platform. You can add tons of things in there. And essentially the job here is now, like, can, we, can we sort of parse this alert payload into those attributes? So you'll see them down here. We have these custom attributes that I've set up lots of lots of uh deep configuration behind the scenes you can do here so i'm going to sort of spare you all of the details but in this case i'm like well i have functionality service and team tagged on my alert source here and what i want to do is sort of parse those out of the payload every time we really receive an alert and uh be able to sort of trigger trigger that into uh the actual payload that gets passed around so let's choose functionality i can just click on this one here and i can say i want to parse that into this functionality thing and what we have here is it will sort of pre-select the, the JSON to, to get that out of the payload, put it in there. And if I hit update now, what we have is this like expression that will parse that data out. And you'll see in this alert preview, we've now got this like nicely formatted login uh, functionality tagged on this alert. And I can do the same for service and team here. Um, and you'll see that these now are all sort of updated loads behind the scenes that sort of goes into uh, details of this stuff um, the fact that these are all kind of colored boxes tells me that they're all linked to catalog entries behind the scenes too much to go into right now but suffice to say we now have uh, an alert source that is configured uh, to receive alerts from uh, a sort of an http uh, interaction and parse out all of this nice data from them now uh, we can the next thing we need to do here is like connect these into a route so Alert routes are essentially our way to say, well, when an alert is received, what do you want to do with it? Now for HTTP alerts, I want to select this one here. I want to say this is going to be called my HTTP alert route. Um, I'll hit continue. And now I have a bunch of options I can do with this here. So first of all, I can apply whatever filters I want to this. So if I want to scope this down and say, maybe only want to, only want to ingest uh, alerts where the title contains foo, I could do that and I would have a filter there. I'm going to leave this so that it has everything. 
we can then group alerts as well um, and so we have a bunch of optionality for like how you want to group alerts so whether that is by time window so time-based grouping content-based grouping um, which we can also then do here so we could say for example we want to group these by team now that will mean if we have alerts that come in to, to one team and then they're sort of in, interlaced with other team alerts we will fork those in two separate places in this route so you can sort of handle them differently here lots of functionality we can get into um, but too too much for right now now, this is how we choose what happens with this alert route. So we receive an alert, we sort of filtered it and grouped it. Now, what do we want to do? In this case, we're going to create incidents. So we'll say we want to pull the description out of the alert and that will be the default thing that goes in here. Um, you know, alert fired with this description. Um, and you'll see that we sort of have an incident will get created with some sort of bootstrapped data in it. Lots of configurability about how incidents would, um, would map there. Now I can sort of do some interesting things like pulling out. Um, so we have like incidents can have custom fields, which is ways to attach like metadata to them. Um, and I can pull that metadata out of the alert that comes in. So let's say I want to tag the functionality on this um, alert. I can jump in, uh, so we want to tag the functionality on the incident by pulling it out of the alert. Now what I can do here is I can say functionality, we should pull that from alert attributes functionality, which was that configuration we set up on the alert source. I can do the same here for other things like uh, team and service. So I'll pop those in now and service. Uh, and you'll see that we've now got sort of the, uh, the the bare bones of like an incident now getting created, pulling some data out of the alerts, everything sort of nicely flowing through. I also want to escalate these alerts. So I'm going to say I want them to also, whenever I receive an alert on this route, I want it to create an incident and I want it to page me page me directly. Um, and so this will be what makes my phone hopefully make a noise when I show you in a second. Nice, and that is now alert, alert source configured. It is now alert route configured. We have sort of the whole bare bones of um, an end-to-end -end incident and paging solution sort of ready to go. So if I come back into here and just resolve all of my alerts, hopefully we should be able to um, show you end to end what it looks like to actually fire an alert have it routed to me have it come to my mobile app what it all looks like end to end for you so uh cross your fingers pray to the demo gods um let's fire off an alert so fantastic uh the alert has arrived few things have now happened first of all i've been paged uh it has not making made a noise on my phone because uh it's plugged into my computer but it would be at this point sort of making lots of noise now let's get into the headspace of like it's 2 a.m what am i doing like how would i actually be responding to this so first thing first i would jump into my mobile app i would be looking at this and being like what is actually going on now a few things that are really nice here first of all really clear to see what the alert is on this uh this top red tab here um but i can also see now where i am in the kind of escalation path so it's telling me i have nine minutes to sort of look at this to digest it and then sort of make a decision about whether i can acknowledge it or not um, let me move myself out of the way um and uh so yes you can very clearly see that in nine minutes this will escalate to level two of engineering which is just helpful context to have as an on-call responder the the other thing that's really interesting and useful here is that we have at the bottom here this functionality service and team so because we've done that work in the alert source configuration to pull out that data i don't have to look at messy json i don't have to sort of apply too much thinking here i just have this information immediately at my fingertips and i'm sort of primed ready for for what i'm about to go and uh, jump into so in this case i'll acknowledge that alert and I'll be taken to this screen where I can sort of see the bare bones of this triage incident that's being created. That is pretty much all I would do when I'm sort of, you know, waking up and trying to actually sort of acknowledge this thing. Now, at this point, what I would do on, on the way to my laptop is probably get there and then immediately open Slack. I wouldn't be on the incident dashboard. That is not just a realistic thing that people do. People are immediately like, how do I get into the place where I get to communicate about this and sort of get responding to it as well? So you'll see when I open Slack, I have been invited into this incident channel. Uh, I have all of the sort of information here at my fingertips as well. Let me zoom in so it's a little clearer. Um, and uh there we go um and i now have an incident sitting here in triage i'm going to accept it because this looks like a serious thing that i want to actually look at i can change the details here if i want to and go for it and now i'm immediately into incident firefighting mode uh i haven't had to do anything i've pushed one button to acknowledge an alert 
and I'm now fully primed ready with a channel that I've been invited to everything that happens here. If I was to have like other complex things I wanted to do about my incident response, so firing workflows, all those other sorts of things, notifying other people who've subscribed, that will have happened for me. Very, very little I need to do. And now I have the full power of the Incident.io platform at my fingertips to sort of get going with this response. So I think a, a ton of useful things to dig in to sort, of, to sort of look at there. You can see as well, just to sort of highlight these custom fields on this incident have been set. So I've got this functionality account service. We have a ton of useful information there as well. Um, and I think you'll agree, like a pretty seamless and nice uh, experience for sort of uh, someone to be on call.